All right, everybody, give it up for Dayman making it up with the double feature of Smart Ball. Dayman, take it away. All right, thank you very much. We're gonna play uh, some Smart Ball today. Uh, this is a platformer from 1991, uh, made by Game Freak. And so if you see some stuff that looks like they're ripping off Pokemon, it's not exactly ripping off Pokemon, but it is made by the same two people that made Pokemon. Uh, all right, and we're gonna start our timer right here out of the menu. So we're gonna go three, two, one, and go. This game is often summarized as wonky physics, good music where we have a run button, which is also the stick to the walls and ceiling button. And uh, the physics to an extent are also RNG because sometimes when you go over a ledge, you'll go through this little hop and sometimes you won't. And you want to avoid that little hop because it just messes you up for no reason. We can attack by pressing up and down, which we're gonna be doing a lot. You get a few invulnerability frames on the startup of those attacks on the part of you that's doing the attack, which ends up being very useful. And also, you can throw balls that you pick up, which is a crucial form of combat, but uh, unfortunately, the ball trajectories are RNG. So sometimes it'll go forward and down a little bit, or forward and up a little bit, or just straight forward, and you don't know what's going to happen. So you just kind of have to aim very generally and then hope for the best. So, for marathon safety, we're gonna do a few things as safety strats, taking a few extra pieces of backup health, etc. But we should still have pretty good, pretty good fast trips to these levels. Most of the levels aren't terribly dangerous, though there are a few later where the risk of dying is fairly. So this is actually the faster version of the game, which is the uh, American version. The Japanese version of the game has all the lore intact. We have a whole bunch of cutscenes and intermediate stages in between the A and the B stage of every world. And that gets omitted. Uh, rather than translating them from Japanese, they just take them out, which I guess is one way of going about it. So this is one of the levels where that little RNG hop thing becomes a problem, but we're just going to be careful there and jump around. Set up here to... Ah, that's bad. A uh, little set up there to make sure that we... It's almost really terrifying. Uh, sometimes you can get stuck to walls and stuff. This happens. I grab a little bit of backup health here. Just because this boss fight can be kind of trolly every once in a while, and we don't want to have to read it. This will be the first use of the iron power-up, where it's like the red ball, except for instead of being a projectile that you can keep stock of, instead you have to recollect it. We're going to try to get a one cycle on this. That's a problem. So one cycle's not going to happen. So I... Beast! Oh! The save. There's like four people in the world that know how impressive that save was. That's okay. I mean, listen. Next run, you better get that one cycle even faster, alright? I will. Don't you worry. I'm prepared. Now, we're gonna take the secret exit for this stage, which is not something that a lot of people find in their first playthrough, but this is kind of like the lore exit, where you find this boy and you lead him back to his family in town. He get lost in the desert. We're gonna use our sand. Go! That looks like another bitrate problem. I will be having a word with my ISP. Because that was a problem, and then it went away, and now it appears to be a problem again. And I do apologize, guys. No one wants that to happen. Listen, try... with the power of your donations, you may be able to save Dayman's bitrate. It did work last time, I'm just saying. It did? 
yeah, you know, $50 made the bitrate soup go away for a little bit. Maybe another $50. Just saying. Just saying. It could happen. It could definitely happen. There's a uh, you know, ground type Charmander. One of the cool thing about this game is with semi solids is if you jump through uh, as you're approaching the top of the semi solid, you can jump before you land on the top, which allows you to do climbing rooms very, very quickly. All right. Pop that, save a few lag frames, and tar like that. So now we're going to the moon. Because why not? That just looks like the rocket ship from like Mario 2? From Mario Bro yeah. 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 Yeah, they totally stole it, don't worry. Alright. So, like bitrate's coming back a little bit. That's always nice. So now we're on the moon. And jump over the blue rabbits, and we'll just let the pink rabbits jump over us. Very peaceful moon music. We don't get to hear too much of. It's a very short level. There's a very shocking difficulty drop that kind of happens as you approach World 4. But it picks back up in World 5. I don't know why World 4 is so short and so free, but it is. Eight worlds total, A and B. And the 4B is just a boss fight. It gives you a variety of power-ups. Let's take the iron. Phase one, then there's Dude. Dude. Oh my god. <laughs> I swear I pressed up. Anyway. So. Well this will be very easy to beat my uh my first <laughs> run now. We'll get that extra health, just so that doesn't happen again. Sometimes you're like, I swear I pressed up, and then the game says, no you didn't, don't lie. Whatever. I don't know what that was all about. Fine. Anyway, Underworld 5. World 5 is water. And when you're underwater, you can't dash, so that does make the physics a little bit different. Oops to grab extra health here which is always a good idea because we're going to do a damage boost strat uh here okay, not there that's why we get the extra health don't uh get the damage boost strat then we have to do an extra room which loses a little bit of time but it's not the end of it and like the run suddenly crumbles safe Back, and then we got extra health, so we're going to do damage boost across these spikes. And that's going to skip that first tower room. Safe down here in the water so we don't hit that fish, or I'm sorry, that bird. Full trace. And we're out! Might be a little bit different. This one's mostly centered around the boss fight at the end of it, but there is a little bit of fun platforming that happens before. Very strange physics of this game translate decently well to water, but the next world is ice, and that's when things get a little strange. Oh, we got Krabby. Now we got a fat penguin. <clears throat> oh. 
Oh. It's gonna spam up attack. And he's dead. Oh. Didn't even get hit. So now, ice physics. This is the worst level in the game, for sure. Because you take how slippery this game is normally, and then you add ice. And then things get... Take an extra health. There's definitely a few good opportunities for damage boosting that I will not be taking, because I want to live. We're gonna do safe strat here, and climb this wall. Jump over everything. It loses like a second, but it makes it very safe. I did that on purpose because I had the extra health and I didn't want to time the jump. And we don't need a whole bunch of health getting into this last section. Ice Charmanders now. Penguins. Not fat. Normal penguins. Pretty quick here. And the high jump we have is going to be really useful getting into this door early. Otherwise, we have to deal with that intermediate block, and everything's made of ice, and it's an absolute mess. This is very good. Still a little bit of ice physics and a boss fight at the end, as we always have with all the B levels. But this one is a little bit more forgiving overall. Age jump. Nice, say hi to Hugo. It's fine. We're gonna do something a little bit safe here. I don't want to die, so we're just gonna grab a little bit of extra health. I don't want to have to do this level again. This level kind of sucks. I'm gonna grab two extra bits of health, which is slow, but it's a marathon, so. And I've got a quick kill setup, holding the certain set of inputs as I go through this door. Oh. We got it. Oh. Easy. After you kill him, those ice blocks that fall can still hurt you. Always be attacking and be ready to go, because... Oh. Oh. It's a mess. Oh. 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 Alright, world 7. So, 7A is is tricky. I'm gonna do kind of the simplest route, which is to go up the waterfall and just mash like crazy. There are other ways of going about it, but this is the one I'm most comfortable with. There is a better one that I haven't practiced enough to do in a marathon. We're gonna get a high jump, and then we're gonna jump and mash. And every time I have an opportunity to... Ah! Every time I have an opportunity to Boost myself with a little jump. We're gonna do it. That's no good. Please don't. Thank you. Grab. Come to the ground here, and we're out. Don't like that level. It's not even that hard. I just don't like it. 7B is definitely harder. So, this one, we have a boss at the end that will require us to do a bit of a damage boost. So, I'm gonna. Normally, it's. You just don't wanna get hit. And that's good enough, but I'm going to play it extra safe and get some bonus health. Just so I don't have to worry about uh, having to do a level again. Because there's not a convenient checkpoint. So basically it's you get it or you have to do the level twice. I don't want to do the level twice. I need to make sure I have three balls and uh, a couple extra bits of health. The mysterious speed boost that happens in this next part, we don't know why. It would be nice to understand it. Time for the fight. Uh oh, that's bad. That was very, very fortunate. Now we just hide. By hide, I mean crouch. And then it's a survival phase. On to the last world. World 8 is like fake Castlevania land. And we're gonna have some pretty cool strats here. 
him. Up. Oh. Skip you can do with the high jump, so we need to grab the high jump right now. Normally without the high jump, you'd have to jump off that mouse. It's just annoying. And precise jump from here. Oh boy. Precise jump from here. There we go. I got the up attack on that, which is good, because normally you have to take damage. There we go. Crouch. There we go. Cycle. Through. High jump makes that jump considerably easier. Otherwise, we'd have to uh, do a really precise jump. Grab extra health here. I'm good on health now. It's gonna make the last bit of this pretty. That's fine. Still okay. A health upgrade soon. Pick a pipe. So, or a maker well before it's time. It literally is just a pick a pipe section. If you pick the wrong pipe, you have to guess again. Eat that. Just gonna grab it. If I got it. I could save a very small amount of time. It's not necessary. Normally, if I'm here and I'm, like, worried about health, I can take an intentional death. I'm not going to do that right now. Because with that extra one hit of health, I'm perfectly fine. Even if I take a, a hit of damage to this boss, I'm good to go. Bit of a cutscene. Normally, you'd get some lore here, but again, in the American version, they cut that out. down. Last level coming up. Uh-oh. That's really bad. I messed that up earlier this week, too. It's weird. So, two big mistakes. We're gonna go save strap. There we go. So, that's a little bit of a, a shortcut. It's actually a massive shortcut, to the point of it saves time to just never do the level the right way. Even if you mess it up, just die and try again. Here, pick a pipe again. Grab an extra bit of health. Bonk him, bonk him. Over this one, bonk him. Kill him. Want to. Do set up to get a precise jump with the high jump. Pick up a little bit of extra health so that we don't have to worry about the final boss fight being problematic. And I'm going to pick up some more extra health so I don't have to worry about the final boss fight being problematic. And then we're going to slide on over. You can't actually pick up those blue health hearts if you currently have an item like the high jump or the iron. So you have to be... Kind of selective with how you do it. You saw me do that back in 6B. In 6B, I had to throw the the health or the high jump up and then re-catch it because if it hits the ground, it goes away forever. And there is an extra heart there I could take if I was desperate and need for it, but there is some risk to that. Doing normally here, we'd get some more lore. I'm just going to get over to the left side of the screen so I'm ready for the next phase. Normally, he monologues classic final boss style. And then we're gonna go and do our last little bit. And time's coming up right now, time. What do we get? Uh, it looks like uh, about 1846. That's good. Anything under 20 in a marathon, I'm happy with. And yeah, I had... But it ain't over yet. You it ain't over. You gotta make the run back. You gotta run it back. I think we should save the credits for the second time through and just, you know, leave people hanging. Yep. We, got, we got the run back. So, I've already explained pretty much all the game. So, by all means, if you have any questions or... Any announcements? 
Fire them up. All right. Three, two, one, and again. Might implement a few more slightly riskier strats here. See if I can show off some of the cool stuff that you can do with this game. But, uh, be dependent on whether or not the game allows it. Sometimes the game doesn't want you to do cool stuff. A little bit faster that time. My semi solid jumps were better than the first time. Uh, 1A was pretty good in the run. I'm gonna just get a little bit of ammo here, get a little speed boost off the house, dude. Oh, throw out that pig. That's actually a very good start. <laughs> I hope this PBs, then I'll have like the coolest PB. It would be incredibly cool. It would be cool. Everyone wants a cool layout for their PB. far significantly better than the first run, which is not surprising because I will say that it's a little bit easier to go from Smart Ball to Smart Ball than from Rogue Squadron to Smart Ball. You want to know what else is pretty cool? What is pretty cool, Boardwalk? Well, Speed Docs has some shirts going on for this event. Shirts? You can go to speeddocs.tv and pick up a shirt. And the shirts, uh, they go towards making future marathons and events even better than they are now. So, pick up a cool shirt, and it's available for a limited amount of time. This is, this is wonderful news. I'm looking forward to checking those designs out right after I finish this run, which will hopefully be faster than 1840, whatever it was. I just won't die in the Constellation boss, and we're good to go. It's basically all it means. Don't die to the easiest boss in the game, and it's a PB, not a PB, but it's a... It's a, a marathon record. There you go. Still gonna grab the backup health for this boss, but we're gonna get a better one cycle, don't you worry. Toss the actual ball ahead so that we can act quickly. Oh no, there we go. Textbook, except for the one little flub. On 3A. I'm gonna go for a couple of risky strats on 3A. See what we can come up with. You can get all of those rooms that are inside that little area uh, on one single dump. You do them perfectly. But it requires you to do an upwards extension at the perfect time at the stage. Still going for it. I need to practice those a little bit more. There are a few other instances in which that kind of jump extension ends up being really helpful. A little early. They're very hard. Out of practice. But if you mess them up, you really don't lose that much time because normally you do it in two jumps, except for you'd go short jump, big jump, and then to go from like big jump, recover it, big jump. I think if you miss all of them, like I did, you lose like a second and a half. Which, grand scheme of things, not the biggest problem. This is my favorite level, actually. I love this level. Do really cool stuff. Moving Wall of Doom. Platforming is just very satisfying, jumping all of these weird cactus dudes and pincer. I had a little uh, upwards extension on that one jump to get from that second cloud to the third one. Damage there, which is bad, but not the worst. Because I shouldn't be taking damage in this next room. I'm just gonna extra safe there, just to be sure. 
And then I can't really get hurt by the boss unless I do something like horribly, horribly wrong. And even if I did, there's a checkpoint right before the boss. Like you've seen the me get those Jerry letters, and those are all checkpoints. If I die, I go back to the last letter that I collected. Important to note, it is not the latest letter in Jerry. It is literally the last one you collected, and there are a few levels, including this one, where you can accidentally set a worse checkpoint for yourself by collecting them out of order. And you can die and then have to go back to the beginning of the level. Essentially, again, Mario Maker, you CP1 yourself, and it's not ideal. Alright, back to the moon. This time, I'm not going to mess it up. As far as bid wars go, how is, uh, how's that all looking? We have uh, a few things left that we're, we're bidding on. Got a progress update for me? Uh, yeah, just looking at the polls right now. We do have, we still have the Super Monkey Ball uh, bid war coming up, of course. There's the Four Monkeys, Baby, Gon Gon, Mimi, and I I. I I taking the lead. I I as in uh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train, I I. Uh, Ooh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Gone Gone Mimi, of course, tied for second, 65 each. Baby is sitting back at 24. So if you want to see your favorite monkey get up to get up to the plate, then be sure to donate. Very nice. As well as the, uh, the next Speed Docs video, of course. Got three on the plate for that. Got Jack 3, Ratchet and Clank going Commando, and Final Fantasy 9. So be sure to type exclamation point donate and check out those big wars and donate. How do I die to this boss twice? I don't understand. I don't know how I messed up that upwards toss on that last ball. That's ridiculous. Okay, that's fine. I don't hate everything, don't worry. Four hits like that it's not even nerves like i feel fine i don't know how the game betrays me like this i mean i know that smart ball is an evil game that betrays everyone at the same time i can you know go back to what i talked about earlier which is that the projectile uh trajectory is rng which is a hundred percent correct but oh. dude there's actually a, a task strat where you jump off that flower and then jump on all of the birds to get over to this door faster. And it's way faster, but it's almost impossible. <laughs> so, fortunately, we don't have a good setup for that yet, but I would love to find a setup to do it because it looks so cool on top of being faster. These urchins have gigantic hitboxes, so you have to be very careful. And we got the damage boost that time too. Nice. Uh, help, sir. Safely out of 5A with one catastrophic mistake. I'm definitely ahead of last run. He's been very good otherwise. Maybe be careful with these scene enemies. They also have a really big hitbox that does not match their animation at all. Extra care. Ah! And then Fat Penguin again, mash up, and that's it. Uh oh. That's fine. That's why I was going to that boss with a little bit of extra health. Sometimes you can get trolled by the fish he shoots out. Back to ice. I can have another good ice world. A little bit of damage there, but nothing we can't be concerned with. 
Just gonna play it safe here. If I had max health, I would normally damage boost through those spikes. But again, marathon safety. No. Jump. There we go. You can enter doors midair, which is both good and bad. It's good when you do it on purpose, and it's bad when you get really excited and want to do anything else. Big jump here. Jump over the weird blob dudes. Good 6A. We're past through the dangerous part. This has potential to be actually a pretty good run, even though I had my dumb mistake still. There's no scarier room than that room when you don't have high jump and you have only one hit of life. So then you have to worry about the rock, and you have to worry about the Charmander, and all the stuff that the Charmander spits out. Problem. Uh, that's bad. It is safe. It's not in here. One problem with this game is that the camera is uh, does not automatically put Jerry in the center of the screen. And so, if you enter a door from the left, it can be kind of annoying. Alright, we're good with there. This is definitely ahead of the last And we get the warm-up. Four levels remain. Man, that level, when I first played this casually, I thought for sure the game was going to kill me after I killed that last boss. Because the first time I killed him, I died to one of his icicles immediately after I beat him. And then after that, I'm like, okay, I made sure to take care of the icicles. And then the floor starts moving out from underneath me. I was so mad. And then it turned out to be it. Alright, let's not mess up my mashing and all that fun stuff. Nope! No! Good, good. Grabby, jump, jump, and we're clear. We remain. We're gonna do the same thing we did uh, before, and we're gonna grab a little bit of extra health just to be on the safe side. This level can be- oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, so we're definitely get that one. For the record, that flame was well below the ground. I don't know what the hitboxes are here. Dispute all of them. In the clear. Extra hit of health will definitely come in handy when we have to damage boost off that boss at the end. The tricky part about that boss is that if you hit him in his, like, saw blade horn thing, that it doesn't count as damage. It'll still register the, the hit, and you'll get the hit animation and the hit sound, but it does absolutely nothing to his health. It's a big problem. Hey, I got the speed boost. Don't know why. Good music in this game, too. That, that didn't count, which is a problem. But I got another up attack, and so we're good to go. Position myself right here. And we're safe. Yeah. Last world. Chance, I was just gonna say, there's a chance that he can move towards you when you hit him, which is random and annoying. And we had it that time, which meant that I had to bump him twice. Same strats as before. Oh, wait, sorry, I died in 8B2. Oh. Oh, boy. Uh. Uh. 
This is tense. Okay, we made it. Fortunately, once we get to here, it's not the biggest problem because we get a, a checkpoint letter right there. So even if I make some sort of like horrible mistake, it's not the end of the world. Oh boy. I'd like to not do that though. Made the save. Oh, let's go worry about this fire dude. A little bit of health here, and then there's one more piece of health I can grab before we make it up to the fire. Do an up attack to make myself a little bit narrower. Pick a pipe. Last bit of health. My jump is always helpful, even if it's not a section that requires a bunch of climbing, because you can use it as ammo. We got the extra bit of health, so it makes the boss fight extra, extra safe. <laughs> Music in this game is actually quite impressive. Oh, oh, oh. One of the things that sold me on running it, because I knew I was going to be listening to it a bunch. I'm not going to ever run a game that has bad music. Oh. Be Pointless. And here we are closing it out. Hopefully we can avoid the same thing that plagued us last time. Go! Alright, as we're kind of approaching things up, anything else that we need to plug and kind of get all that taken care of before we, uh, this? I guess, you know, now or we're catching the end, or right as we finish up this final boss, head over to YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to Speed Docs. Yeah, be sure to follow Speed Docs on YouTube. We got a Twitter going on. Uh, I believe it is just Speed Docs, maybe Speed Docs TV. Uh, I'm the best at plugging. <laughs> uh, yeah, continue to watch Speed Docs-a-thon, and yeah, we're coming up on the end of of this beautiful, beautiful game Jerry has been carrying us through this run. He's the best! Can't mess around with Jerry. Also, Speed Ducks on Twitch. They sometimes stream events on that channel, even though they're mostly on YouTube. Right. Oh, oh. Here, and I'm, it'll be time as soon as the screen turns blue. Damage, big wall. All right, looks like you got a, a thirty-eight nineteen. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how much that, how well that translates. I think you started like a thirty-nine, like a low thirty-nine. So it was about the same run twice. It was this yeah. was de this was definitely faster than the first one though, because I made the same mistake in four B, and then I didn't make the other mistakes. So definitely faster for uh. Awesome. Very exciting. Yeah, you absolutely destroyed Smart Ball there two times over, so... Yeah, thank you very much, Dayman, for putting on an excellent show, both Rogue Squadron and Smart Ball two times over. Up next, we'll have Shadow Complex Remastered with Funyuns, so y'all stay